Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over some of the most common bioinformatics file types that you might come across. So let's head over to the screen share and let's get started. So the first file on our list today is the FASTA file, which has the file extension either .fasta or .fa. FASTA files, they store biological sequence data. So this can either be nucleotide or amino acid sequences. So a FASTA file can have multiple sequences inside of it, as you can see on the screen. And each sequence will have two elements. Firstly, you've got the, the single line description, which is prefixed by this greater than sign. And then beneath that, you have the sequence. So the sequence can span multiple lines. So it's a very simple file format. It doesn't contain any extra information. So for example, like sequence quality or anything like that. It's simply just the, the sequence description and then the sequence itself. FASTA files have quite broad use cases in bioinformatics. You can use them you know, for storing your genomic sequences, so DNA, RNA, or protein. They can be used as the format for reference genomes in alignment processes, and a lot of bioinformatics tools will take them as input. So the next file I'm going to show you is the FASTQ file. So very similar, um, this time the file extension is FASTQ or FQ. These files are used for storing high throughput sequencing reads and the quality scores. So each read in a FASTQ file is characterized by four lines. First, you've got the identifier line, which is prefixed with this at symbol. It can also include a description. Then we have the raw sequence. So this again could be either DNA, RNA, or protein. And then the third line is a separator. So typically just uh, the plus sign, which you're using here, it's used as a separator between the, the second line and the fourth line. And the fourth line we have here is the quality scores. So these correspond to the nucleotide sequences um, and these are represented as ASCII characters. So these scores represent the confidence level that each nucleotide is being accurately identified. We use an encoding system called the FRED33 score, which is calculated using this equation up here. So Q score is calculated using the probability of error in this equation. So we calculate the Q score using this equation and then we offset it by 33 to get the ASCII character. So a FRED score of 10, which corresponds to an accuracy of 90% or a one in 10 chance of error is represented by the ASCII character plus or the addition sign. So we're taking the Q score and we're offsetting it by 33 so we're basically adding 33 and then we take the ASCII character which corresponds to that number. So let's take another example. Let's say uh, we have a FRED score of 20. That represents 99% accuracy or 1 in 100 chance of an error. And that's represented by the ASCII character of 5. And then similarly, if we take a FRED score of 30, which represents 99.9% accuracy or 1 in 1000 chance of an error, that's represented by the ASCII character of the question mark. So if I just go back, as you can see, these are our ASCII character representations of the quality score corresponding to each base. So to summarize, the quality scores give us an estimated probability of a nucleotide being misinterpreted. And these can be used to filter low quality reads and to also identify sequencing errors in downstream analyses. FASTQ files are often the direct output from high throughput sequencing apparatus like the Illumina sequences. And then we can use these as the input for sequence alignment software, uh, enabling us to map the reads to a reference genome. Okay, so the next file we're going to go over is the SAM file. So this has the extension .sam. So the SAM file is a widely used format for storing biological sequences aligned to a reference genome. So the file consists of a header section and an alignment section. So the header section that's the lines that begin with the at symbol. And this contains information about the reference sequences, the alignment method and other metadata. And then the alignment section beneath that, we basically have one row for each aligned sequence. And there are various fields of information along here. So starting from the left-hand side, we have the read name. Uh, next, we have uh, the bitwise flag. So if you can see down below, I've just listed what these different numbers mean. And a bitwise flag of zero means that the read is mapped in the forward direction. A bitwise flag of 16 means it's mapped to the reverse strand. The third column here, that's the reference sequence name. Next, we have the position. So this is the leftmost mapping position. 
uh, of the first base in the read on the reference. Next is the mapping quality. So again, this is using the thread scaling, which, which we showed before. A thread score of 30 translates to a 0.1% chance that the mapping position is wrong. Next, we have the cigar string. So if you look to the bottom right, I've listed what these different letters mean. So a 40M, that means that all 40 bases in the read match the reference. And the 30M10S means that 30 bases match the reference with M and then 10 are soft clipping, which means that the sequence is present in the read but not using the alignment. So the next columns are the reference name of the mate or next read, uh, the position of the mate or next read, and then, the, and then the observed template length. And then the final two are the actual read itself and then the quality scores of the read. So to summarize, these files are used to store read alignments from sequencing experiments, especially from uh, Illumina sequencing platforms. And they can be used for the analysis of genetic variants using tools like GATK or BCF tools. And they're also useful for visualizing alignments in genome browsers. I'm now going to introduce two more file types, and that's the .cram file and the .bam file. So these are binary encodings of the SAM file. So as I mentioned, the SAM file is a human is human readable. It's human readable text. Uh, the BAM and CRAM files are compressed versions of the SAM, um, and they're used to save space. They're slightly different in how they're compressed. So for the SAM file, the SAM stands for Sequence Alignment Slash Map File. The BAM file, BAM stands for Binary Sequence Alignment Map. So it's a binary version of the SAM file. It contains the same information, but it's just in a compressed format. So the BAM format is useful when you have large amounts of data generated by you know, high throughput sequencing technologies. It contains the exact same information as the SAM file in terms of information about its read and its alignment. But the files, because they're compressed, they're a lot smaller. So they're not directly human readable, but you can view their contents using tools like SAM tools, for example. Now the CRAM file similarly is in a binary format and it's actually even more compressed than the BAM. But the things with these CRAM files is that they rely on an external reference sequence for compression. So it's highly efficient in the sense that it only stores the difference between the sequence samples and the reference and it relies on that external reference file to be to be able to kind of understand it. But it saves you even more space effectively. Okay, so the next file we're gonna go over is the VCF file with the extension VCF. Uh, VCF stands for Variant Call Format. So these files are designed to store and represent genetic variation data. So they describe the positions and nature of variants in a given genome or set of genomes. And these variations can range from single base changes to large segment alterations. So typically in these files, we'll see they start with these metadata lines, so prefix with the double hash symbol. Um, and these just provide a description of the file's contents and format. Then we have a header line with a single hash prefix, and this just describes the, the different column names. And then beneath that, we have a single row for each variant. And for each row, we have all these columns, so the chromosome, position of the variant, variant identifier, reference bases at that position, the observed alternate bases, uh, the quality score, the variant call, the filter status, and then additional information uh, about the variant. So let's just go over the top example. We see that the reference allele is A, and then we have two alternate alleles that exist, which are G and T. Info DP, that, that's like the depth, how many reads covering that position. And then these last two columns at the end, these are gonna tell us the genotypes for the samples. So there's basically this zero base indexing. A is zero in this case, G is one and T is two. So that's basically saying genotype for sample one is heterozygous AG with a depth of 50. And then genotype for sample two is heterozygous AT, because remember, naught, one, two, so we've got A is naught, T is two, uh, this time with a depth of 40. So yeah, one row for each variant, and these files are useful for reporting variants that are detected from whole genome or whole exome sequencing. They're useful for annotating variants with functional information or population frequencies, and they're also useful for aggregating data from multiple samples or studies um, to detect patterns. Okay, so up next we've got two files, we've got GFF and GTF. So both these file formats are used to describe genes and other features of DNA, RNA and protein sequences. So the formats are very similar. Uh, GTF is a refinement of GFF. 
So these are plain text, tab delimited human readable files, and they have a structure that allows for the representational features and their relationships in a hierarchy. Starting with GFF, there are actually multiple versions of GFF. You've got GFF2, GFF3. GFF3 is the latest version, most widely used. Um, and we can add a comment here in the first line, uh, dictating the version of GFF file this is. And in each file, we have various columns, the first of which are very similar between them, so the sequence name, um, this is the source of the program or method that generated the feature. And then the third is the feature. Then we have the start and end positions of the feature. A score, period just means no score available. And then the strand, positive or negative. And then this is the frame. So if, if you're using protein sequences, it can either be naught, one or two. Um, but in our case, we're just using a period for not applicable. And then finally, we've got these attributes. So these are semicolon separated list of tag value pairs which provide additional information uh, about the feature. So you'll notice there's slight differences between the two in terms of these attribute fields. So in GTF, we have like the tag and then the value in quotations, whilst in the GFF, we have the equal sign. So these files are used for annotating genomes and telling us where genes uh, introns, exons, and other genomic features are located. Okay, so the next one we're going to go over is the bed file, .bed extension. Um, BED stands for Browser Extensible Data. And these files are used for representing genomic regions and their annotations. So we're basically just describing intervals on a genome, such as locations of genes and other features. And this, this format is particularly useful, again, for genome browsers where we can visualize uh, custom tracks alongside standard genomic annotations. So a basic bed file contains at least three required columns. That's the, the name of the chromosome or scaffold. And then we have the chromosome start and chromosome end. And then you can have these optional additional columns which contain more information about each feature. In this case, we've got the name and the score and the strand, but then you can have, you know, you can have multiple additional columns. So these files are very useful for representing genomic regions of interest. So for example, like differential binding analyses or regions showing differential methylation. And they're also useful for uh, displaying custom annotations in genome browsers. So the next file type, PDB, Protein Data Bank. These are a textual format for representing three-dimensional structural data. So primarily that's proteins and nucleic acids. So typically you might determine the structure of a protein or nucleic acid through something like x-ray crystallography. And then this data format allows you to visualize it in a human readable way. So let's just go over this file. First, we have the header, which contains a brief introduction to the molecule. And we have a title and then we have these atom lines. And these lines provide details about individual atoms in the protein or in, in whatever structure that you're using. These lines will start with atom. The column after that will be the atom number. The next column is the atom name. Then we have the amino acid to which that atom belongs. Then we have the chain identifier and then the residue number. And then we have the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the atom. So these are, these are the uh, Cartesian coordinates. The final columns here, the one that represents the occupancy. So how much of the time an atom is in the described location because obviously these atoms like are moving the next column is the temperature factor and then the final column is the element type so we've basically got an atom line for each of the atoms in our molecule then we have this row that begins with ter so this one is marking the end of chain a and then we have this het atom line this line is used to describe atoms that aren't a part of the standard amino acids in the protein so oftentimes um, a structure isn't just isolated, it's often in contact with other molecules. So here we have a water molecule and we're looking at how the protein is structured in relation to this water molecule. So it gives us the X, Y and Z Cartesian coordinates for the water molecule as well. So to summarize this file, we're showing the 3D structure of a molecule in a human readable format where we have the coordinates for each atom. So these files will allow us to visualize the 3D structure of proteins and, and other molecules. So there's certain um, molecular graphics software such as Pymol or Chimera, where if you load these files, you'll be able to get a nice visualization 
of your molecule in 3D space. Some other usages of these files are in structure-based drug design, in protein engineering, and also in molecular dynamics simulations. Okay, the next file we're going to talk about is the math file .maf. So math stands for multiple alignment format. So this format is used to present multiple sequence alignments of genomic sequences. So it's a way of arranging sequences to identify regions of similarity. And as you can see, these files are organized into distinct blocks. So we've got two blocks here. The first line in the block starts with an A. This indicates just the start of the block. And then the subsequent lines beginning with S, they represent individual sequences within the alignment block. So yeah, in this example, we've got two sequencing blocks and three sequences are aligned from their respective chromosomes at the given positions. So I've basically got the source sequence name, the start position of the aligned region in the source sequence, uh, the size, which is the number of bases from the source sequence in the alignment segment. And then we've got the strand, the source sequence length, and the actual aligned sequence itself. The hyphen indicates a gap. So in each block, we're basically aligning sequences from, from three different genomes or three different sources. And these are useful in comparative genomics. So where alignments from multiple genomes might offer insights into evolutionary processes or conserved elements and regions. These are also useful in functional annotation. So where genomic features such as coding sequences or regulatory elements can be identified using evolutionary conservation. And then also in population genetics, where variations within populations can be studied. Okay, the last file format we're going to go over today is the the GAF, GAF file. So GAF stands for Gene Annotation Format. And these are primarily used by the Gene Ontology Project. And they represent annotations of genes with Go terms. So they allow us to capture knowledge about the functions, processes, and locations that are associated with a certain gene product. Annotations in a GAF file are laid out one per line. Um, we actually have two lines here, but they're wrapping due to, to, the, to the length. So we have information such as the database from which the ID originates, the unique identifier that that database gives uh, to the item. We have a symbol, uh, the Go ID, we've got the reference, evidence code, and then we have the aspect. So this is the ontology which the Go term belongs to. So C is cellular component, and then you can have like F for molecular function or P for biological process, and then additional supporting data. So these files serve multiple purposes, including annotation of gene products in a consistent manner across different databases, uh, information exchange among various Go tools and services, and they enable computational analyses for functional genomics and systems biology research. Okay, so that's a wrap on the most common bioinformatics file types that you're likely to come across. If you enjoyed that video, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.